Hello everyone, so today I'm going to do part four of my analysis of Amber Heard's appeal and her appeal brief. Of course, I'm going to be looking at, starting at least with the four that Andrea Burkhardt identified in her channel, with her analysis, as being the four most important ones. And that was based on what they spent the most time looking at and what words they used. So it might not actually be the, the four big ones, but it makes sense. I, I sort of, I'm trusting Andrea Burkhardt a little bit here. Now, I've already done three. I did the UK judgment, the uh, decision to host it in Virginia instead of perhaps in California or New York, and I did the relevance of the medical records. So I did zero, zero well, practically zero, practically zero, and one in 5,000, I believe I did for the um, medical records. And now I wanted to look at the fourth big one, which is the damages. So in this case, Amber Heard's team have argued that $10 million was excessive. And the reason they say that it's excessive is because the jury were misinformed and were falsely directed that Johnny Depp, or they, they were claimed that Johnny Depp had earned or would have earned more because they didn't take into account um, the fact that Johnny Depp had already lost the UK trial and therefore that they couldn't include things from 2016. So they only, could only include it from 2018 because this trial has to assume that the 2016 case in the UK was accurate. This isn't an appeal of that case. So essentially they have to say, well, the damage done between 2016 and 2018 is done, it's over. We just have to look at the extra damage that was caused since 2018. So because of that, they argued that 10 million was excessive and that he asked for too much, the jury were lied to by not knowing about the UK trial. And if they'd known about that, they would have awarded a much lower amount. So I wanted to start this by assuming that they, that there had been no UK trial and that we were actually doing this case from 2016. So we're assessing all of the damage caused by Amber Heard not including anyone else from 2016 when she first started with her lies. I'm gonna call them lies because they've been proven in this court to be lies. And even though she wasn't assessed on what she originally did in 2016, we can reasonably assume that all of that was lies. So even though there might be a technicality that says, well, we shouldn't include the 2016 bits, for the sake of this argument, I'm gonna assume Johnny Depp had not sued in the UK, had not sued the Sun, and that that wasn't relevant. And what amount would he be getting? Now, we can work this out by looking at their divorce proceedings. And these were held in 2017 and looked at his income while they were married in 2015 and 2016. And they assessed it as him having earned $70 million, seven zero. Amber Heard in that time earned one, uh, $3 million, zero three, just three. So they were offset against each other to have a combined total of 67 million. And she was given half of that or $33.5 million. Only seven million of that was in cash. There were other ways to work that out. Offsets, if you like. And so when she talks about seven million, actually that's quite a bit of a lie and because she actually got 33.5 million. And again, if you've got 33.5 million, you think you could afford to pay back 10 million. But anyway, if that was the case, so he was earning 35 million a year for those two years. And if we consider everything since then, was damaged or infected by this defamation. And then we can say, okay, those two years would have been replicated in the next six years. And you would have had 35 million years for six years. So pretty simply, 35 million times six is 210 million. Now that would then be offset against how much he actually earned in those six years. Now I don't have those figures, but I believe it was practically nothing. Essentially, he earned a little bit in 2017, soon after her restraining order and all that sort of stuff, but it pretty much, pretty quickly went down to zero. So the offset would be, I don't know exact figures, but it might be 10 or 15 million. So if, let's say it's 20 million, we'll be generous. That means that he would be asking for 190 million if he was going since 2016. So clearly with him asking for 50 million and only getting 10, he was not including the whole since 2016. Because if he was including all of that income since then, since the last clean year, if you like, he would be asking for about $190 million. And him asking for simply 50 million is saying that he's acknowledging that he's not asking for all of that. 
and he only got 10 million again. So there's a factor of 20, or not, a factor of 19 difference between the 190 million he could have asked for and the 10 million dollars he actually got. So to suggest that 10 million is excessive because of it being including stuff since 2016 is quite simply false. It's no, there's no basis in reality with that claim. The second part of this is, well, if we cut out those two years, so we assume that, that, that those two years should have been part of the Sun judgment, in other words, that he should have asked for 70 million from the Sun, or minus offset by how much he did actually earn. I think he earned quite a bit in those two years compared to the next four. So let's say that for that 70 million, he would have earned 10, so he'd only get 60 million back. And then for these four, you get 140 million minus five, and you get 135 back or 130 back. So you would then say, okay, the UK is responsible for the 60 million in losses that he faced for those two years, and the US case is responsible for the remaining 160. So if that's the case, he would be asking for 160 million. So because that was his actual losses in those four years. But of course, we are now assuming that it was reasonable to say, okay, it was reasonable for her to defame him in those two years. We haven't been assessed, it's been, been assessed in the UK and said it was reasonable, even though arguably it didn't actually assess that because it was only assessing with the sun, not her. But nonetheless, Amber Heard team managed to exclude that part from this case, therefore reducing the amount that Johnny Depp could ask for from, what I'm saying, 130 million, down to, well, he was given a 10 million, but he asked for 50 million. We're not, we're not asked, in this appeal, we're not asked to ask if 50 million was excessive, only if 10 million was. So given that his actual losses in those four years was 130 million, was 10 million excessive? And Johnny Depp's team went there and they proved that there were 50 million in actual losses from how much he would have got for, for films that he didn't get to produce or didn't get to feature in. And the jury assessed that and said, well, we actually only think it's 10 million. But then they also awarded 5 million in punitive damages, so their total amount was 15. But then that was reduced based on some technicality in the Virginian court system, which nobody knew about, down to 10.3 million or 10.365 or something like that. So, and then that was offset by Hamber Hurst to 8.365 million. But we're not worrying about the offset, because that's being appealed separately. So we're worried about the 10 million, and we're not worrying about the 365 because that's punitive damages and that's separate. So we have to ask, what's 10 million excessive? Simple answer is no. And then we have to ask, well, should we increase that from 10 million to a more reasonable figure, given that his actual losses were 130 million, and given that we can consider actually that the UK trial was not correct, or at least that it wasn't correct if it had assumed that Johnny Depp was actually guilty. Because all that the, the UK trial, or the UK court, was actually asked to assess was whether the son were guilty. They never questioned, or not to the same standard, whether Amber Heard was guilty. And we can marry those two up and say that she was guilty. Um, and she could have been guilty for the UK trial as well. And therefore, the correct figure he should have asked for was 190 million and for those six years and he should have been granted 190 million but does the court have the ability to now look back and say well that decision was wrong that the decision to exclude the UK trial or sorry to exclude those two years and all the effects of it was wrong well the thing is Johnny Depp's team have not appealed that if they had there would be reason to go all the way up to 190 million but they haven't appealed it so the the judges don't really have the option to do that. But they also don't really have the option to go below 10, considering that 10 was really low-balling it. They have to go with what the jury said, who said 10 million, and say, well, that's what they wanted. Even though they could have gone for the full 50 and quite reasonably could have gone to 130 or 190. Um, the fact that they went as low as 10 million is up to them. They've decided that, well, that's all he really lost. And they're allowed to do that, it's not excessive. So, simple answer there, it's not excessive. But the, ju the judges are allowed to change that. Would they change it down? I see absolutely no motive to change it down. But they could change it up, because the jury have actually asked for 15 million. And because of a technicality, that went to 10.3. Because of the five million of that being in punitive damages. 
and it would be quite reasonable for the judges to assume that the jury actually wanted 15 million and they could therefore adjust it to be 15 million. And even though Johnny Depp's team have not directly appealed that, they have indirectly appealed it because they appealed for um, the Adam Waldman part. So the judge is perfectly allowed to go put it up to 15 million, remove the punity bit and therefore avoid the technicality. And I think that's very likely to happen. So I'm putting this at about 75%, but I'm still leaving the 25% chance they'll leave it alone. Will they reduce it? I can't see any way that they could. Anyway, that's it from me. Bye-bye now.